Hello. Um, before I get started talking, I wanted to just mention that I have an idea for a roleplay video that I want to do, but I'm not entirely sure how best to do it. Um, I think it would definitely be a good real person ASMR thing, but I don't have a willing participant. <laughs> Um, so I was going to do it more as like an instruction type of thing and it's kind of in the same vein as like, um, oh god, what's it called? The sitting thing with Diana, what's her name? Hello Gita, I'm Diana. You know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know why I'm blinking, but... Essentially, I am trying to figure out if I should try to shoot it from like a distance to show most of my body in the movement since it is kind of like a full body thing or if I should, I don't know. If you guys have any ideas of how to do something in that kind of vein, please leave me a comment on this video. Um, I would appreciate the help and any ideas in terms of like from a viewer's perspective uh, what you find the Alexander technique what you find to be most effective so with that out of the way hi I'm obviously rusty um, I was worried that I wasn't gonna remember how to turn on my camera but here we are um, I took <clears throat> a bit of an unexpected impromptu break for a couple months. Um, it wasn't a planned thing. I think I just needed some time. Um, had a few things I was going through, a few major life changes, and just wasn't feeling recording. Um, I absolutely love doing this and doing it under pressure is just not enjoyable for me, so I wasn't going to force myself to film and I don't think I could have if I wanted to. Um, another issue that has been keeping me from getting in front of the camera more recently is that I put on a few pounds when I was going through all of this stuff, a few more pounds I should say, ever since I opened my business, which was like over a year ago, <laughs> let's see, yeah almost two years ago actually, um, I just have not had the energy to exercise the way that I had been and keep myself in that physique that I had, which has been a big source of internal shame and I've really been struggling with my self-image and um, feeling really embarrassed and uh, uh, just a lot of shame surrounding how things have gotten again because I had been so determined to never let them get to a certain point again. Um, so it's just been a lot of mental back and forth and I've been going to therapy and just trying to kind of chill the fuck out because I was a little too up there for a little while. Um, so there's one topic predominantly that I kind of wanted to talk about today um, along with a couple other things that have been on my mind I suppose so the main topic that I wanted to talk about is the concept of being vanilla I don't know how else to really describe it but um, average vanilla normal whatever word makes sense to you. I feel 
like I've been having a lot of extrapolating thoughts about that recently. Um, I even actually debated making an entire YouTube channel devoted to short videos of me just encouraging people to <laughs> um, essentially be themselves in a way. Um, anyway, let me explain kind of what I mean, I suppose. Um, very often we want things we don't have, right? That's kind of just seemingly a facet of being human it is, you know, the grass always looks greener on the other side and all those other cliches. There's a reason why those exist because they're repeated human behaviors um, that have just cycled for millennia. So that being the case, I think as time has gone on, like with most cliches and things like that, it becomes less meaningful and you can kind of just get caught up in your day to day um, and the things and the people that you see and your daydreams and you know you end up wanting a lot and I think that in some previous forms of um, I don't know, philosophy that I've absorbed, there's always this like gratitude practice, you know? Write down what you're grateful for, think about what you're grateful for every day, live with gratitude in your heart and all this, and like it sounds nice, but it's never really like clicked for me um, fully, and I think that's okay. Um, Maybe gratitude just isn't an emotion that comes easily for me, and I can see why that would be the case based on my life history. So I've never really, I've tried those practices, I've never really succeeded in those practices changing my perspective or my feeling of contentment, I guess. Um, I think it's really wasteful that so many people, myself included, live life never being content or happy with who they are. And even if we exclude the material stuff for a moment, just being fine, accepting who you are, you know, there are a lot of different human forms and facets to admire. Um, there's a lot of things that seem desirable, and as we know, those things vary from person to person, so as much as we can know that in an outward way, we know that like we really want this person's eye shape and that person's nose and oh this girl has the best hair and oh this boy has the best body and the list just goes on we start rating everything in our heads and wishing that have that thing or even close to that thing and it's just wasteful and sad that we don't we're not able to place ourselves in that world like we are also <laughs> that to someone else someone looks at you and wishes they had something that you have 
whether it's physical, material, whatever, you're a part of that giant, you know, palette of colors that are available in the world. Just like anyone else, you're no better, no worse. You all exist and therefore are all subject to other people's envy. Um, and I don't say that in like a mean or derogatory way. I think, like I said, it's a very normal thing to almost kind of fantasize like, well, what if I had that thing? What would happen then, you know? And um, this first came into my mind a few weeks ago. I was actually getting my toenails painted and when I was checking out, you know, I was talking with the guy who was working at the register and uh, I, I guess I smiled at just in general or at something he said and he um, like like a bolt of lightning was like oh my god and I'm like what he says like you have like perfect teeth and I was thinking to myself well I mean first I thought thank you <laughs> and that's what I said and the next thing that came out of my mouth was really unexpected to me. I just kind of said, we all get something, right? You know, and in reality, I don't think I have perfect teeth. I know I don't have perfect teeth. I'm not saying that there is something wrong with my teeth, but I don't find them to be a level that would... <laughs> affect any human being to that level, to where someone would say right to my face, wow, you have perfect teeth. Like, I don't feel that way. I don't dislike my teeth, but I know that I have crowding. I know that I've had cavities. I know that, you know, I wish I had a different enamel or you know, certain parts of my teeth are not symmetrical, just like everyone else's, so hearing the word perfect just elevates them to a level that I would <laughs> never describe myself, my teeth, I guess I should say, as. But once I, <clears throat> once I said to him, you know, everyone gets something, that kind of just got me thinking, like, everyone does get something. There's no, I can't say there's no, I'm not going to speak in absolutes, but there are likely very few, if any, people who are just through and through abhorrent, like Quasimodo's face and body with Hitler's attitude and, you know, <clears throat> whatever, like, and even then, maybe their toes are nice, you just don't know, but everyone does get something, you know, there, there are parts of you that are enviable and admirable. Where the hell am I going with this? Okay, <laughs> here's where I'm going with this. Um, we waste so much time wishing, not just in the looks department, but in life, in the greater picture. There's a really, in my opinion, fine line between aiming for goals and overshooting I don't know how to say this in the right way, but I just think people can get very lost in some fantasy life for themselves. Oh yeah, I really, you know, want to have a billion dollars one day. And there are people out there who will say, you know, oh, just manifest it or whatever, okay? Maybe I understand that having a positive attitude is a great thing and will help you towards your goals. I agree with that. But 
I can't just like wish there was a billion dollars in the room with me and then all of a sudden there's a billion dollars in the room with me, you know what I mean? And I think nowadays there are people who are like, you know, I just want to be a popular streamer. I just want to have a successful YouTube channel. I just want to, you know, be envied by people. I want to do something impressive. I want to do something that makes me or others feel superior in some way because it would be nice to have that level of accomplishment or you know I'm stringing together a bunch of different ideas that can be in this capsule of thought so I really think that we just need to start spreading the message that life can be really good and really happy and pleasant and wonderful even if you are just a massage therapist you know I love what I do I am glad dare I say grateful that I've gotten to a place where I'm starting to recognize how much not just how much I love my job but how awesome it is that I get to do what I do and that I don't have a boss and I make all the rules myself and that I'm successful and that I have a four-day work week you know like and I'm still making more money than I've ever made before doing anything else working many more hours being more stressed having someone else telling me what to do you know those things are important to me I'm not someone who likes to take instruction from other people I don't like working in group projects I hold myself to a high standard with things even if it's maybe not healthy and I don't like being forced to deal with other people's standards and differences um, as far as work goes. Work to me is something that I don't really want to be doing anyway, <laughs> which I'm working on sensation but it's just this feeling of like you know it's getting to be the end of the night and I'm watching a really good anime or playing a video game or reading a really good book or working on a budget or playing with my dog and I just start feeling like god damn it if I only didn't have to go to work tomorrow you know like I could keep doing what I'm doing right now for I'm really enjoying it. That sensation of I wish I were somewhere else has been a really big problem for me in the past with work because I really hated certain aspects of the conditions I was having to leave my home, my happiness, my freedom for. Here, I have a life filled with freedom. I'm able to make everything exactly the way that I want it. That's completely my choice. Nobody gets to tell me anything and I appreciate that a lot because it's just something that gets under my skin if I'm gonna have to be somewhere other than home I want those conditions to be as <laughs> bothersome-less as possible and I've created that kind of situation for myself 
would it be awesome to have a super thriving YouTube channel and, you know, whatever for some people, yeah. For me, no. The only thing that would be awesome about it would be making more money than I could spend because everyone always needs more money. Like, I mean, normal people anyway. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's always something that could be upgraded or whatever. You have to make sacrifices when you're not pulling in, you know, a million dollars a month or whatever. Some of these more ridiculous, famous online personas have done and are doing. Aside from that though, they have no freedom. And I think that that's part of the reason why people kind of bitch about having that job, whether it's a streamer or influencer or YouTuber, no matter which type of online sensation you are, you are completely at the mercy of thousands, millions, hundreds of thousands of people. You don't get to choose. And I think that's where a lot of the breaking point is with a lot of creators, you know, that start off very likable and their channel just gets so big and so beloved and admired and all those good things. Once they realize that they are being watched, literally, they don't have enough comfort in being their vanilla average self that everyone likes anymore. And all of a sudden it's what's gaining the most traction? You know, what do I need to do to make these people keep watching me? There's no understanding of the inherent worth, self-worth that they've created to get to that point. And that can be very limiting, you know, like you're not going to be potentially as creative as you could be if you're worried more about what's gonna sell, what's gonna pay my bills, what's going to buy me that new car, or whatever the situation is. Um, so, essentially, when you're working in that kind of a space, or, you know, doing a kitchen job, which I used to be a server for a really long time. Um, I was a tutor, I taught, I did editing and writing. Everything was always on someone else's clock, someone else's expectations, someone else's ideas, you know. Everything had to be influenced by something outside of myself. And that pressure would make me literally like flat out suicidal. I couldn't stand it. I just hated waking up every day to do something for someone else. Um, it's just fundamentally not the kind of person I am. And there are people out there who are Mother Teresa wonderful and good for y'all, but it's just not who I am. I, that's not me. Um, I don't enjoy doing menial tasks for other people, and that's no disrespect to the people who enjoy that. There are people who are like, yeah, tell me what to do. This takes all the stress off me. I don't have to make anything. I don't have to, you know, worry about whatever. I just have to do A to B, A to B, and clock out when I'm done, you know, and embracing that is my overall point, though. Like, it's good to just accept your average, whatever that means for you. 
I'm not saying don't have goals, don't aim for, you know, the stars or whatever, but it's really sad to me, you know, all these statistics I hear randomly in people's videos about how the next generation is like really hell-bent on becoming a YouTuber. It's not that great of a job. Like, as it would be awesome to get rich quick, right? But it's not a good job, at least in my opinion. There may be people out there who absolutely love having a thousand people a day tell them what to do and how to act and giving them ideas. Maybe that's inspirational for them, but I guarantee for at least half, if not the majority of people out there, it's just not, it's not fun. Humans aren't built for community that big. You know, this is beyond a scale that we are evolved to handle. So it's going to take a very particular type of person to like really thrive and wake up every day happy. And I think, you know, like the only example that's coming to my mind right now is like best dressed. Um, I know there are other people I've watched though who once their channel hits a certain point, they're just like, I need a break from my mental health. It's like, yeah, because you're doing nothing for yourself. You're just worried about what everyone else thinks of you. And that kind of ties into the other part of what I've been thinking about, which is kind of the I don't know what to call it. It's like a mixture of self-acceptance and confidence and contentment and all those good things, you know, just I heard in a video I was watching this morning from an influ uh, I don't know if I should call her an influencer, I guess she is, that I've never watched before or listened to before one of her videos was just randomly recommended to me and I watched it and in it she said, and maybe this is from someone else, but this is where I learned it. She said like, wake up every day like it's the first day of your life. And she was saying that in the context of shaking off the old traumas and opinions and judgments that have affected you previously in life in order to kind of come into who you are now. She was saying, you know, like, see yourself as you are now. And in order, and in order to do that, wake up and see it as this is the first day that I've been alive. So you don't hang on to some snarky remark that some bitch in middle school <laughs> made to you and you're in your 30s and you're not worried about, you know, something really embarrassing or a cringy behavior that you had in the past. You're living from today forward in a sense. Um, and I just think those two concepts are very underrated and very important. Like. You're gonna get so much more out of life by accepting it as it is. I, for example, I don't wanna say any of this stuff out loud, but I'm going to because who fucking cares, right? I really like the color of my eyes, but I don't like the shape or position of my eyes. I don't feel like they're big enough. I don't feel like they're spaced out far enough. It bothers me. Um, I like my hair color generally, but I don't like my eyebrows. They're 
not shaped super well. They uh, grow weird and they're very faint, so you can't really see them very well. They don't do a good job of defining my face, which is apparently a super important job of the eyebrows. Um, I think I have good ears, you know, like they're a good shape. I think that they're size appropriate <laughs> and kind of cute. But I hate my nose, you know, I think that it's too big, too like beaky, um, too bulbous, just a lot of qualities that if I were designing a nose or picking a nose that I thought was really cute, it would not look like, <laughs> like mine. Okay. Um, I dislike the size and shape of my lips, but I've gotten comments from viewers, albeit sometimes they're creepy, saying that they're like the perfect shape and size. So even if it is an unwanted <laughs> comment, still there's somebody out there who appreciates a feature of me that I don't. Um, but instead of focusing on eyebrows and my lips and my nose. Life is better if I focus on my eye color and my ears and my smile and my teeth, you know, like perspective. <laughs> it's your life is just going to be so much more full if you are accepting the whole version of you. All of the good stuff, all of the bad stuff, that's just who you are. And I know <laughs> there's one cliche that, good god, I hate it so much, but it definitely sums up <laughs> kind of what I'm talking about. And here it is. Be you. <laughs> Everyone else is taken. <laughs> um, that's kind of you know, the underlying sentiment that I think can fuel a much happier life despite being average. And if you're only listening, I put that in air quotes. Um, if I only ever make sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year, I can still have a fantastic life on that amount of money. If I, you know, keep my body and face and everything exactly how it is, don't have any surgeries, don't have any filler or Botox or anything, which I never have done filler or Botox or anything, but, you know, like, if I never change a thing about myself, if I stay this weight that I am today that I'm not happy about, it's still more positive on my life to just accept that this is who I currently am. And that's all right. You know, I can still have a very fulfilling life, great friendships, which I don't really, you know, it's not like my friendship life has become bustling all of a sudden while I've been gone. But I'm just saying. You know, you don't have to be a big name to be enviable. You don't have to be elitist in any way for people to look at you and think, man, he or she is lucky to have X or I wish I had their um, and in fact, I think, as I've been not so eloquently summarizing here, the more you accept and appreciate your just pedestrian, your mediocre, your vanilla, your version of all right, the better life that you're gonna have. 
in the end, the more fulfilling, fruitful, happy, fortuitous, fantastic, all the F words that you can imagine. You're just going to have a much better time than sitting around and, and wishing things were different, that you were different, um, not valuing yourself and your life. So personally, I, for whatever reason, that statement of like, wake up and act like today is your first day of life really like clicked with me and I'm going to make an effort to do that on you know most days I'm sure I won't be perfect with it but how good of a mood would you be in but I think that's really why it hit me it's like man if I woke up tomorrow and imagined today is my first day of life I would be in such a better mood you know like nothing would have technically changed but it would give me permission almost to be whoever the hell I wanted to be and live out the things that I want to live out and not carry all of this super dense baggage from the past into the next day and the next day and the next day so that's all I know that was a lot but um when is it not with me I guess uh, I just wanted to share that kind of uh, I don't know train of thought different newer philosophy that's been in my mind and um, hope each of you is able to recognize that every single one of you has something I wish I could have. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Whether it's a friendship, a relationship, uh, you know, where you live, what you do, whatever, how you look, your, your knees, I don't know. I mean, there's something that you have that I would love to have that I envy and admire and think is fantastic that you have and it's like that with everyone for everyone so just be yourself because everyone else 